Welcome to St. Paul's this morning. I'm Carol McPhee and making the announcements on behalf of the worship committee. Uh, welcome to this third Sunday of Advent. And certainly we have the bleak midwinter this morning here, change of degrees, <clears throat> but it's bright and sunny and calm. Uh, so I'd like to welcome you this morning to St. Paul's in person and also for those of you who are going to be watching this online sometime during the week. Uh, so welcome, and I'd like to pass the peace, have you welcome each other with the words, peace be with you. And also with you. So welcome your friends and neighbors and members of this congregation. Do we have any celebrations and announcements this morning? Georgina Taylor is having a birthday coming up. When, Morris? The 18th. The 18th. Oh, my goodness. That's, uh, and how old will she be? I shouldn't ask that, I guess. <laughs> she says somewhere around 100. <laughs> coming close to 100, but not quite there. 96. Welcome, and yes. Now, I, I don't, that's Edith that suggest, Doll that suggested that their daughter Coralie has her birthday on the 12th, and she's out in BC, and lots of cases out there, so we hope that everybody is safe, and ho hope everybody in our extended family is safe as well. Deanna Grunding is suggesting that Courtney, Stephen um, Doug Hallman's wife, is having a birthday on the 18th of December as well. So happy birthday to them all. And there are a few important announcements here. Uh, following today's service, if you could stay and have a little video of you lighting a candle that will be used in the Christmas Eve service, that would be marvelous there. Uh, all you will have to do is light the candle and hold it and look at it for what seems like a long time, but it's really only a very short time. <laughs> so if you have time to do that after the service, that would be marvelous. Uh, there's a board meeting that's coming Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, December the 20th, we will be having communion, but unfortunately we won't be having baptism right now, sometime in the future when things are a little bit better here. But communion next Sunday, so if you could bring your own elements, whatever you would use for uh, drink and also for um, bread, that would be appreciated. If you forget, that doesn't mean don't come because we will have some extra. Uh, the 21st, there will be a blue uh, Christmas service online from the Tisdale Ministerial Association. And Thursday the 24th, we will have our own online Christmas Eve service. And there's details to follow there. Uh, there's a, there are a number of things that we've been raising money for, and all of the values are in the bulletin there. Uh, $320 from uh, the White Gift Sunday last Sunday. Uh, there has been an increase in the amounts from the No Fall Supper. 4515 has been do donated. The Poinsettia Memorial Flowers, um, you'll see them on the front here, they are beautiful, and those are uh, donated with the, the names of the people that are on the blue insert today, and May will include that in the bulletin next week as well. So the donors and the number of people that have been uh, the memory of. And for that, we have raised a total of $365, and the wreath and the arrangements cost 217 So a nice extra donation there. Um, thank you to the McDonald's. Welcome again. We liked all their enthusiasm and having Leanne in the choir for ushering today. 
Uh, there is a Living Sky Advent concert tonight. Uh, the website and the link went out in the announcements that May has sent during the week. And it says that there's a $10 donation or a donation of anything, but there seems to be some confusion as to whether you can watch it without a donation or not. Uh, so if you are interested, uh, the concert I'm sure will be an excellent one at seven o'clock tonight. Um, please make sure your year-end donations arrive at the church by the 29th. And there is a request for Christmas greetings or little videos. And if you could take a picture of your family and send it along to Hohen, I'm sure we'll find something marvelous done with our uh, little Christmas greetings. All it is is just your picture and your family or whatever and a, a welcome from them for Christmas. Merry Christmas. There is a number of other announcements there. Uh, the uh, holiday hours of the church and so on. And now we will move to the lighting of the Advent candle. Our Advent journey continues our time of celebration. We celebrate the coming of the Christ child who turns the world upside down. Please join with me. We come, we come to, to dance, dance joyfully in anticipation of this season of new life, new life that challenges and guides, comforts and confronts. Out of pain comes possibility. Out of anguish comes transformation. Out of loneliness comes community. Out of labor comes birth. We come in joy but not to distract us from life's pains. Instead, joy emerges out of each disruption and within each disappointment. We come, we come to, to heal, heal one another in the midst of all life's challenges. We light the first candle reminding us of the way of hope. We light the second candle to signify Christ's path of peace. We light the third candle, which dances in joy even as it burns. And now we will sing verse number three of A Candle is Burning, Voices United, number six. Let us join as one community of faith in prayer. We welcome to worship as we hold images of the baby Jesus in our mind's eye, O God. We image the boundless love pouring out for this child, just as we imagine the colicky nights and the diapering days. Teach us to stop drawing boundaries between joy and labor allowing us to lean into the wholeness and complexity of life. Bless us this morning with an openness to all of life's realities, knowing we are never alone in the struggle nor in the celebration. Amen. And if you would join with me in the territorial acknowledgement. In the spirit of reconciliation, let us acknowledge our relationship with the indigenous peoples of this land. We acknowledge that we are gathering for worship on the traditional lands of the First Nations and the homeland of the Métis. We are all treaty people bound by the understandings made in the agreement known as Treaty Six. 
and now we will ring the bell to center us for this worship of joy. Let us join call to worship. Together in this time of waiting we call Advent to reflect upon our lives, our faith, our past, present, and future. We gather to support each other through the coming season of Christmas with its joy for some, sorrow for others. We gather to reset ourselves on our faith journey within our Christian family, the Church. Let us worship God, who gives us Jesus the Christ, alive in the past, in the present, and in the future. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy One, our hearts are filled with anticipation. The promise of new life is proclaimed. Our hearts are overflowing. Take any jadedness that we hold on to and set it free so that we might fully embrace this wondrous time of year. May the joy of this blessed season be experienced by all people, especially in gentle ways for those who are hurting and lonely. Grant life-changing peace and love to your beloved ones. We pray, focusing on the stable of Bethlehem. Amen. Our first scripture reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 24. Rejoice always, pray constantly, and give thanks for everything. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Don't stifle the spirit. Don't despise the prophetic gift but test everything and accept only what is good. Avoid any semblance of evil. May the God of peace make you perfect in holiness. May you be preserved whole and complete, spirit, soul, and body, irreproachable at the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The one who calls us is trustworthy. God will make sure it comes to pass. Rejoice. We are often tempted to feel that joy comes after something joyful happens. Therefore, we might feel a little awkward or even uncomfortable to hear rejoice as an imperative call. Rejoice in the Lord. In the scriptures, this is not a recommendation or encouragement. It's an imperative. This is because joy is different from happiness. We cannot be happy all the time, even though society seems to think that we should always be happy. Some of us even demand it of ourselves. But joy, joy is more like an attitude or determination. In contrast, happiness is not our choice we make. Of course, we pursue it desperately, but happiness just comes and goes. We cannot control it. Sometimes things happen to us and we feel sad, angry, and frustrated in our hearts and minds. Happiness, though, is different. When we lose our loved ones, we cannot feel happy. Yet, though we are missing our loved ones, 
we can find blessed joy in the memories of them. Joy can stay with the with with other feelings. Happiness can't. Because of the notorious COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we are we cannot sing hymns out loud, and we cannot gather with our families and loved ones this Christmas. And it is a huge loss. It's okay to feel sad, not happy. But but even in this challenging situation, we can choose. Joy. Joy is a choice that we can and should make, even in this pandemic. Yes, even in this pandemic. Rejoice always, pray constantly, and give thanks for everything. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. So please remember. That joy comes first among these three crucial commands. Rejoicing is not an option. Rejoicing is part of worship. It's an imperative part of how we worship God. Without joy, we cannot please God. So today, instead of singing along. Uh, sing along. We are going to clap along <laughs> with the music of the carols. So, can just clapping hands or not singing or using yeah that bells or something like that be a way of praise, a proper praise? For sure, for sure. Psalm ninety-eight uh, four says. Make a joyful noise to the Lord. So rejoicing in God is true worship. So let us joyful noise to our God. So if you choose to use your musical instrument, so let us practice the rhythm. One two three. One two three. One two three. One. Great.
before I start the scripture reading that those of us who were involved in uh, bringing Reverend Hohen to St. Paul's had no idea that we were getting a musical director as well as a theologian. <laughs> Thank you, that was so good. <laughs> I'm going to start this morning with the reading from Isaiah. Isaiah 61 verses one to four. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and to release the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations." And then Isaiah 61, verses 8 to 11. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. And Romans 16, verses 25 to 27, the final doxology. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret, for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. And John 1, verses 6 to 8. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify the light. And John 19 to 28, the testimony of John the Baptist. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. 
What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to unite, to untie the throng of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. S D G. It is known that one of the greatest composers of religious music, Johann Sebastian Bach, wrote the, the initials S D G at the end of each and every of music manuscripts that he wrote for the church. Soli Deo Gloria, glory to God alone. By doing this, Bach was trying to glorify not himself in his music, but God alone. Probably the last words of uh, Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 16, was not written by the Apostle Paul by himself, but later attached. When followers added on to Paul's original writing, given the fact that the early church collected and assembles materials from various resources, it is not so surprising. Yet, by adding this final doxology to the end of Romans, what did the early Christians want to say? Summing up the core of the good news, they would have wanted to praise God's salvation revealed in Jesus Christ. They made their last words. S D G. Without the word only or the form of superlative, we cannot sing a proper doxology such as glory to God alone or glory to God in the highest. What do we really mean by glory to God alone? One of the most common religious phrases, glory to God, has a danger of becoming a few empty words. Saint Irenaeus once gave us profound wisdom on this. The glory of God is human beings fully alive. Therefore, anything that helps human beings live abundantly contributes to glorifying God. We need to scrutinize and recognize what hinders human beings from being fully alive. For example, what has made our black sisters and brothers cry out, I can't breathe? Systematic racism in North America hides the glory of God. So in order to praise God, saying glory to the God alone, we need to fight against racism. One of the specific direct ways we can glorify God is by working to become, become anti-racist in the North American society. Fight the good fight of the faith. That's an inevitable part of glorifying God, promoting human beings fully alive. And it is what the United Church of Canada is calling us to do. In this Advent season, remembering the early Christians and the Protestant 
reformers, let us ask ourselves: Do we really glorify God alone, not ourselves? How can we participate in the act of encouraging all human beings fully alive? Now,、uh, let us take a moment with a meditative music. Now we are going to sing and listen.、Uh, Voices United 62 once in Royal David City.、Uh, just verse one and two. Voices united in the bleak midwinter, verse four.
Let us pray, offering prayer together. Gracious God, with thanks and praise, we joyfully bring this Advent offering. We ask that these gifts be used to bring joy to our community and joy to the world. We ask this in the name of the one you sent to bring us joy, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you are the center of an advent of joy. While we fear life disasters, it is not so with you. Holy One, we pray that you will save those who stumble and gather all who are outcast. Often we are among them. With joy we draw upon the life-giving power of your salvation. You are our strength. as we offer songs of joy to the Holy One. Great in our midst, O God, is your peace which surpasses all understanding. It will guard our hearts and minds in Christ as we welcome your coming. And we gather all our prayers together into the prayer Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Closing hymn. Voices United, 328, Jesu, Joy of Our Desire. Blessings and commissioning. Live joyfully as you leave this Advent service, for we believe that the good news of Jesus' imminent arrival will find within us a response beyond imagining. We will, we will connect, connect with, with others, others and share joy and, and compassion. We will, we will recognize, recognize our own loneliness and show friendship to others who are lonely. We will be aware of the selfishness within and around us and confront the intolerance. We will give generously and receive graciously. We will be sure that the love of God will find a place in our families and in our circles of friendship. In this coming Advent week, go live joyfully in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Say.